Welcome to the Real Life Group's Leadership Podcast, a conversation about creating small groups where people grow in spiritual maturity in relationship. We're focused on you, the small group leader, giving tips and tools to help you lead effectively. Well, I want to welcome you to today's episode. My name is Chris Short. I'm your host, and it's our 10th episode of the Real Life Group's Leadership Podcast. We're going to spend some time looking back on some most asked questions from our groups, group leaders, and I've got some of our uh, common guests that have been on our show several times, uh, Evan Meske on the groups team at our Post Falls campus and Sarah Short on the women's team at our Post Falls campus. And you guys, uh, I just figured this is going to be more of a, a natural, raw conversation, just going to throw out some questions. We're going to answer them. We haven't rehearsed this. We haven't planned for these questions. So Did we you don't- plan? Did you plan? No. no. Okay, Maybe, I didn't did you? either. Okay, no. I so didn't. we're gonna. This I didn't could know be, how to plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This could be a train wreck. We're gonna see how it goes. Um, again, on our tenth episode of this podcast, we're gonna probably refer back to some of the previous episodes yeah. uh, to review what we've talked about before. We're also gonna give you a little bit of a glimpse towards the end of where we're going in this coming season. But um, let's start before we jump into some of the most frequently asked questions, the most asked questions that we get from group leaders. Just want to share some of the most random stories uh, that you've experienced in in groups and yeah. maybe it's a group you've been in maybe it's groups you've overseen just to kind of start the context of how groups go <laughs> you want to start yeah um i'm well we were chatting about it a little earlier like there are different situations that happen i think all the time but i think probably the craziest situation for myself personally at least was um we had someone in our group um who would stay a ridiculously long time um, into the... Like after group? After group, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, group would end. And when I say ridiculously long, I'm talking like 11 p.m. at night. And I and I had the hardest time getting this individual out of my house of, like... And I was trying to be kind and nice and, like, had all these, like, cues and... Um, trying to, like, close the door. Yeah, no. Like. And, but I either, like, would it just have to be, like, super rude, right? And I didn't want to be rude. And, and I remember several times even where you would be out of town... And luckily we had had, uh, we had another, or we had a single gal who was younger. She was like in her twenties and she would put my kids to bed for me because this gal would not, oh my goodness. Yep. wouldn't leave. And, um, anyways, it was just the craziest situation I'd ever been in. And yeah, That's good. it was, yeah, it was good. We worked it out. So that is random. Evan. <laughs> Trying to think of one that won't uh, implicate current church members. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's smart. That's All really good. the different things. I did have one group that had some kids. They were older kids, so they'd go in the basement and watch uh, films or play video games. And at the end of one night, the leader host went down and yeah. the video game machine was gone. It had disappeared oh somewhere gosh. during group, During that night. During that night. The parents refused to question their children about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. And what? it was an awkward standoff. Our stuff is missing. You won't even entertain the idea that yep. your kids might have taken it. And oh. yeah, oh, that man. group did not last. It didn't last long. No. Hey, oh. Yeah. No, it, it became unsafe. A very, very unsafe group. Yeah, <laughs> yes. We talked about that. That's not a great way to have yeah group kick off. I remember thinking of just in our one of our groups, we had at one point 22 kids in a group. We actually have two different houses, one for childcare, mm -hmm. one for adults to meet in. I remember one night Sarah ran down cause there was a kid barfing. There was a kid <sighs> fighting. It was like, what are we doing? Right. This is like a small church, you know? It was crazy. Yeah. So hey, we'll yeah. just, you know, with all of that, I think that's just a great context to go. When, when people are involved with, yeah. with uh, anything we do, it becomes difficult. When there's multiple people involved in something like a group, things yeah. can be difficult because people are involved. So I think that's a, a yeah. good reminder for all of us in the different groups we lead, there are people, there's going to be challenges. Mm -hmm. It isn't easy. There are people involved. So with that, we just kind of aggregated some of the questions that have come through our groups teams and things we've heard. We're just going to kind of kind of uh, spitball these back and forth. Um, we'll start with this one. This is kind of a fun one is when is the best time to branch my group? So what, what would you guys say to that? What would be a just a mm -hmm. thought on the best time to branch a, a small group? Well, I've had a lot of people say, hey, our group is getting so big, we need to branch. Yeah. I say, that's a terrible reason to branch. Mm -hmm. 
the the reason to branch is that you've raised up a mature <laughs> disciple who's ready yep. to make disciples. We have someone ready to great, actually yeah. reproduce what we're trying to be about. That's when to branch. If yep. you've gotten too big, you've made some errors already previously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the size might be you know a forced you into a situation, but it can't be the reason that you right. do it. Yeah, yeah. super yeah. good. Any no. thoughts on that? No, I think it's it's the right time is yeah when you have a leader. And who's ready and that you've been discipling and now they're ready to take on a group and it's a really exciting time. Branching is one of my favorite things to do. And so is there any season that you guys have seen that does that really matter? Like the time of year? I know. I sometimes in the I like to like usually personally I guess I like branching groups in the fall. Um, usually like you kind of have, uh, a, we would have in my, even my personal group this last year, we have like a big conversation about it in May. We've been raising up leaders. We like pray together, pray over each other. Um, and then we, st then over the summer we might do a few things together, but the new group is it's kind natural. of starting. Yeah. It's more natural. They're doing barbecues and, um, kind of inviting other people maybe into their new group. And then in September, they just kick it right off when yep. it's time to go. I, I like January. We're yep. actually going to branch our group this January. Great. And cool. it gives us from September, October, November, yeah. December to kind of build up to that. Yeah. And everybody knows it's coming. So uh, we don't want it to be a surprise yeah. branch. Yeah. We want the group to know and <laughs> yeah. to be able to celebrate yeah. it along gonna, the way. I was going to ask that. Are there anything that we're li related to branching a group? It's like, this is a bad idea. Don't yes. do this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't make it a surprise. Okay. So yeah. that's a good one. I've, yeah. I've literally been in a group that they said, to everyone, hey, we're going to branch the group. They're going to go and start. Yeah. Who wants to go with them? And it became a popularity contest yes. literally on the spot, in yeah. the room. Everyone felt super yeah. awkward. Which is even a key word we're using is the word branching. We've yeah. intentionally used that word. It's not splitting a group. It's not you know, divorcing. <laughs> you're not yeah, divorcing not two divorcing. groups. We're intentionally saying this group is becoming two yeah. groups, and that's intentional like you started with. We actually have a leader who's identified who's going to step up for that. Well, and I think, too, you have to remember um, to talk about it frequently. Like, yeah. we want to be raising up leaders. We're not going to always get to stay together. That doesn't necessarily – we're not going to be – we're not – not friends anymore. We're still friends. We're just making room for more people. But I know in even my own personal groups that I've been in is that sometimes this is someone's first experience with true biblical relationships and they love it. And so yeah. if you do make it a surprise or all of a sudden you like say the word branching, people will panic and yeah. they're like, they don't want me in the group. Up. Yeah, it's you great. have to. And so make it like a natural part of a convert, like your conversations that you have with your group yeah. that. Like we're trying to reach the lost, we need to make room for yep. people, and we're all growing in spiritual maturity. So, and communication is the key yep. Yep. because people will find a way to feel devalued. So yeah. I try to make sure everyone feels wanted and welcome yeah. in both mm -hmm. environments. It's great yep. when we branch, yep. so that no one's feelings are hurt because it's really easy to hurt yeah. people's feelings That's in really a branch. Good. That's good. Well, good. This is a fun to start with, kind of a more positive topic. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about <laughs> the second one. How should I or should I tackle political issues or hot topics? And I'm thinking some examples yeah. from even the last year, two years, we had uh, discussions about elections. There were things about masks and vaccines, all sorts mm -hmm. of, of big topics. How does a group handle when those things come up? Should they bring them up? <laughs> Sarah, what are your in initial thoughts on that? I just think my initial thoughts are uh, is that you don't want to obviously be having any political debates inside of group. Like that's that's leads to very like unsafe like and when you say just, debates what do you mean by that i would say probably like the idea of arguing or like even saying like that your position and view is like 100 percent right because i think that there are so many issues that we um put a biblical mandate on that actually don't have a biblical mandate on does that make sense and so some there are preferences in the world and um and it's a hard like it can be a harder conversation, but like there are Christians who are Republican and there are Christians who are Democrats, like, and everyone gets to, what? I know it's surprising <laughs> how that works. Oh, wow. And so I think, yeah. um, I don't like think like you can't have an opinion about politics, yep. but like, especially know your group well. And if you've got people that are very passionate about certain things, like you might be careful on how you bring those up or how they're discussed, very I guess, divisive, being yeah. very intentional. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and I default to, let's look at how much Jesus talked about politics. If mm. we're going to follow Jesus' yeah. model and his methods, yep. his talking about politics is almost non-existent. Yep. 
And they were in a very political yeah, very era. Political. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, so how about if something comes up in the middle of your group, you know, it's like, well, man, those people that wear masks, they are they don't make any sense. Yeah. They're not logical. How, how do you bring that in, knowing that there's probably people in a group that disagree with that statement? If I can jump ahead of those conversations, yeah. like yeah. during uh, the COVID scenario, mm-hmm. just yeah. after <laughs> I, I tried to get ahead of that yeah. and say, all right, so there's a bunch of people in this camp and there's a bunch of people in this camp and there's yeah. a bunch of people politically here yeah. and a bunch of people politically here. And I tried yeah. to set the table and say, here's... We might be in any of those oh. scenarios, mm-hmm. but here's what we can all have in common, and here's why we're here yep. in this small group. And so I try to take those and diffuse those to say, we're not yeah. going to be about this, we're not going to be about this, mm-hmm. and you're all welcome here, mm-hmm. but yeah. boy, we're, we're not going to be divisive on these topics because we have a purpose here in this small group. Exactly. That's really good. Yeah, having a key purpose is a huge part of that conversation. Mm-hmm. This is why we exist. This is, what, this is not why we exist. Yeah. And there's certainly time for before and after a group to be sharing opinions and, and healthy debating yeah. you know, and healthy conversations, but I think that's a good reminder. That's super helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, tied in with that a little bit mm-hmm. is the next question. How do we handle doctrinal issues when someone mm-hmm. is maybe made an issue, really a core issue? You know, they've turned something that's secondary. And let's use a couple examples we've experienced in our groups is someone comes in with a background, a charismatic background, mm-hmm. speaking in tongues or, or healing, you know, miraculous healings. Yep. Um, and they want to make that a part of, of group. Yeah. How, how do we engage that? How do we have that conversation mm-hmm. in groups? Well, one fallback yeah. we have is our, our membership document yep. that, that talks about what are the black and whites, <clears throat> what are the gray mm-hmm. areas that we're going to choose to not be divisive on. And so even reviewing that mm-hmm. is helpful to say, hey, we've all agreed mm-hmm. that these are the areas we're not going to be divisive on. And again, we can have some different opinions in these categories. Yeah. And, you know, it's back to still our purpose. We're going to yep. <clears throat> help people grow in spiritual maturity mm-hmm. in relationship. We're going to be in relationship yep. with, each other, with each other. We're going to grow up spiritually. And yep. th- these things we're going to choose to not be divisive yeah. over. And again, if you can hit those before they yep. come up, great. Similar but theme. Yep. Even, even in the moment to, uh, yeah. to say, hey, let's, let's remember this is yeah. one of those topics. And here's yep. where that stands. That's really in our good. Group. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So membership's a part of it. Anything else? I would just think um, if it is coming up, even consistently, like having those conversations, I would say like outside of group with that specific person or couple that you might have. I'm um, having the like listening to their story. Why is it important? Just so you can hear where they're coming from as well. Um, and then, then just being bold as a leader and being like, yeah, this is what, but this is what we're choosing. Mm-hmm. Um, how we're choosing to come together and what we're choosing not to divide over those kinds of things. And then know that as a group's team, we're here for our leaders. And so if you get into a situation where, where a leader's like, man, I'm not sure I can even explain this well, that's when you call us. And yeah. not that we're going to have all the answers, but we're at least here to support yeah. you and to walk you through it to the best. That's why we have of, coaches. Yep. That's why we have a support system. Exactly. And I love the idea of membership because it goes to, we have some things in place on purpose and we talk about a doctrinal position yeah. related to this. And our doctrinal position, I think, really solves well. There are things that are salvational. Yeah. There are things that are uh, non-negotiable and how we're going to approach that. We have some statements. And just reviewing right. that can help. It helps probably even, like you mentioned, proactively at the beginning of a season. And we know, you know, we have we have topics that are in these different camps. Mm-hmm. You know, we talk about our buckets, the first yeah. bucket being salvational issues. The second one being important, you know, we need to align on these. And the third bucket mm-hmm. being things that are preferences and people completely can disagree on. That's yep. okay. To help people know where these different things, political, hot topics, um, doctrinal issues, where they fit yeah. is, a, is a big discussion. Some churches, it's all in one bucket, you know. Yeah. yeah. And for you leaders, I would say redirect quickly. Yeah. So be on your A game nope. when stuff comes up. If you let it go too far, sometimes it gets to the point of no return <laughs> and, oh, this no. has become a disaster really quickly. <laughs> yep. When someone brings up that, say, okay, good thought. Let's talk about that later. But right now, yeah, yep. here's what we're doing That's tonight. Good. That's really good. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so here's a uh, kind of a tricky one. Um, how long, another question, how long mm. should we pursue someone from our group that was maybe once a part of our group that stopped attending either group or church. And you know, they're not they're not self-identifying as leaving, but they're still on the roster. Mm-hmm. How do we go about that? What are some initial thoughts on that one? We should probably ask uh, Derek because no one's ever left my group. 
<laughs> oh, none of your groups have had anyone they all, leave. They will show up they all the time. But Derek Dalton's groups have had lots of people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice slam. We might need to cut that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, no, I think we'll include it. That's great. <laughs> no, oh my goodness. I just think it's so hard, at least for me, I'm a I'm a people person. I love people, and so I have a hard time letting go sometimes because I'm like, where are you going? Like, no. why are you leaving? Or, you know, and... Um, and then it can get to the point of frustration of then I'm like, why are you so flaky? Like, yep. I'm a great friend. You should want to be my friend, whatever. <laughs> you know, what like, so they on. stopped attending for a whole month, right? Yeah. They, they don't show up to your group. Yep. Maybe it's like, hey, I got sick kids. Or maybe they don't even text at all. Yeah. So what do you do with that? For my, man, normally I will, it depends on the circumstance. Like there are certain, like kids, kids get sick, people miss, whatever, life happens. Normally though, once you kind of hit that month, two month mark, um, we have to start having a hard conversation of like, if you're not going to come, we're going to fill your spot because yep. like, again, there are lost people that need to be saved. Mm -hmm. And, and like, we're still like, I'm still here for them. Like I have had people yep. even now who's left our group years ago that every once in a while, God will put them on my heart. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to shoot them a text and check in. Like, how's yep. it going? Where are you at? Like, but there comes a time though, when it's like, yep. I, I can't go any further. And yep. cause I have to remember that there are, whatever 12 other people in my group that I am discipling or I'm in charge of in some way. And so I can't yep. neglect these few yep. either. That's and really so good. are these, this group. Yep. Yeah. And we've all had people leave yep. groups and sometimes they just ghost you Yeah. and they're gone. And so we want to pursue them, yeah. be good shepherds, but we also don't want to be stalkers. Yeah. That's good. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah. And, and there's a fine line there. So we usually <laughs> say, Hey, try to call, try to call, text a couple times, yeah. and then leave a message, either yeah, <clears throat> text you. or phone, yeah. say, hey, we missed you, we've been reaching out, boy, we'd love to connect with you, this is yeah. the last time I'm going to reach out to you, yeah, uh, so yep. please get back to us. Yeah, it's just a tricky situation, you know, yeah. we talk about as a church, chasing the strays, but that doesn't mean dragging them back in, yeah. right, you know, it's just your example. So yeah, thank you, I think that's helpful to for someone to think about, and the reminder that people go through various seasons of life, yeah. and and people are difficult and yeah. so it's it is it's okay for people to to uh, you know find a different group it's okay yeah. for people to <laughs> ghost you i love that that's a pop culture <laughs> reference from that hey, good from, job go. ghosted i love it <laughs> so sometimes when people leave i go whoo yeah i know sometimes yeah, my, yeah it's yeah <laughs> Whew, it's a blessed subtraction yes yep. exactly. yeah. <laughs> that's good yeah maybe we should cut that too no, no keep yeah, it all yeah. it's all keep good going. it's good Awesome. Super helpful. Um, and then maybe on the flip side of that question mm -hmm. is when is it time to actually remove someone from a group? When is it time to yeah. go, this person actually needs to, hey, they're coming to group, but we need to have them. What would be some of the reasons? How would you go mm -hmm. about removing someone from a group? But those are hard conversations and yeah. I mean, lots of potential examples, but you bring up, bring up the political one yeah. Yeah. where people insist on, nope, I'm going to talk yeah. about this. This is part of my life. And if we're doing life together, I'm about politics. Yeah. And you just have to have the hard conversation. And I always say, have it sooner than later. Yep. Go, yep. Our group's not about this. This, yeah. this isn't aligning. Yeah. Sorry. This isn't going to work. Love you. Mean yeah. it. You can't be a part of this group because my job as the shepherd of this yeah. flock yeah. is to shepherd all the flock. And I'm never going to sacrifice the many for the one. I'll sacrifice the one for the many because yeah. that's what God did. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. good. Well, and I think we have to remember that um, we want everyone to be a part of a group. It might not be a part of a life group or a small group in okay. different seasons, if that makes sense. Because sometimes people are going through whether that's addiction or a trauma, a trauma of yep. some kind and they actually need a very specific kind of group like what would be some of those kinds of groups that they would be I maybe would think, better fit better? yeah pure desire a codependency um re our recovery groups are like specific to certain different kinds of addictions and or even like any maybe hang-ups uh, hurts habits hang-ups they talk a lot about um we have our genesis process um for Which both is kind men. of like a counseling it's like group. A, it's yeah. more of a counseling group yeah. um, because there are some things that are happening in our lives or the, in the people's lives that are around us that that I'm not equipped to to do that. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not equipped to do that or I'm I don't not that I don't have the time as a leader, but again, like you said, like there there's a whole group, and so we have other groups that are very specific for yep. for those kinds of things and um, and they're hard conversations but it is actually what's best. And so the idea is it's not like 
a lot of the times, at least for different conversations I've had to have or my my people have had is, it's not that you are out of the group forever. It's a, in this season, this is what's best for you. And that's what we're always looking for is what's best for our people and what's, what's their next step that they need to take. Yep, and I love that uh, reminder. Small groups are a great way to grow in spiritual maturity, yeah. relationship. It isn't the only place yep. to do that. There are lots of places that we get to grow and next steps. And it could be, could be that could be counseling, yep. you know, a deeper level of counseling that they're actually getting some tools, maybe things that they left undone yep. from their youth. Yep. Which last question for today. Uh, I think this one's a, uh, kind of a, a fun one, but also is mm. tricky in the same way is, you know, we've, we've heard over the years, groups that just get stuck, mm. you know, they're like, my people are all, they're, they're, they're stalled. They're not, they're, I don't see any growth happening. You know, what would you say to that leader who's like, I, no one in my group is, there's no change happening. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, we look at Jesus' model. Jesus yeah. had his disciples for three years. Mm-hmm. And here's what I've noticed in years and years and years of doing this. <laughs> almost every group, I would say every group that is the same, no new people coming in, no people going out for more than three years Mm -hmm. gets in a rut. Pretty stuck. They get pretty stuck and they hit a lid. And I know I'm only a good enough leader to lead people so far. And, but most everyone's story is not that, hey, Chris and Sarah Short took me from nothing to the mature disciple of Jesus. It's usually been them for a season and then it was them for a season and then Mm -hmm. it was her for a season and then it was him for a season. Mm -hmm. And so, I think we're missing out if we keep the same group yeah. <clears throat> together for years and years and years. That's really and good. so I don't think it's best for the people. I don't think it's best for our leaders. So uh, here's what I, I have done. Mm-hmm. I've encouraged other people to do and say, all right, we don't have a, a leader that is going to be able to branch the group anytime soon. Mm-hmm. You know, someone's yeah. not ready, someone's not willing, whatever the circumstance, whatever it brings us to that, okay, this group yeah. isn't doesn't have any potential next step. Yep. So say, all right, communicate. And again, don't just drop the bomb in it, throw yeah. the grenade and say, hey, we're not a group anymore. See you around mm-hmm. church. Yeah. But, um, and I try to do that. If we're going into our third year, I, I just tell my group, I told them once, uh, hey, this is the last year we're yeah. going to do this group. Yep. Hey, yep. this has been an amazing group. We love you all. This is the last year we're doing this group because God's calling us to reach some more people. We've got some other folks and I think it's best for us, yeah. best for you guys yeah. to experience different relationships and have some different experiences that'll help all of us mm-hmm. grow yep. in spir- spiritual maturity in relationship. Yep. It just won't be necessarily with each other. And so uh, yeah. weirdly when you say, hey, there's an end coming, everyone was super consistent. Yeah. They wanted to uh, really yeah. enjoy <laughs> the last bits of yeah. relationship with this group of people. And we were able to make it a celebration of, yep. boy, this has been a great season. Yep. I can't wait to hear what God's doing in your next seasons. So yeah. I say- I love that. Don't blow it up quickly, mm-hmm. communicate it out ahead of time, yep. and just say, hey, this is going to be the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And our grandkids, they expect when they go from fourth grade to fifth grade mm-hmm. that they have a new teacher, they have some new classmates, all yep. the things. Yep. And so um, I'd like and that's to... that's okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And so creating an expectation of yeah. change um, being a normal yep. part of group life. That's yep. good. Yeah. Now, here's a question to kind of follow up with that. Maybe you can answer is is every group in that season where, you know, if they're stuck, that's what they need to do? Or, they're, you know, what are the nuances of that? I would think the nuances would be um, if it was a specific kind of group um, or even maybe, like, an, an older group. You know what I'm saying? If you've got couples in their 80s and, and they're doing life together, like, and they're like, hey, we are, like, in this season, this is what we need. Like, mm-hmm. usually I'm like, all right, you guys can stay. At the same time, I've got leaders in their 80s that are like, hey, put me in new groups because I want all the 20-year-olds and that's who I want to be investing in. And so, um, like, I would say, yeah, there are probably some special circumstances, but you would, as a leader, as a group leader, you would talk to your coach or your group's team and talk, like, and figure out, like, what that would look like for your group specifically. I'm also thinking of, you know, the, you know, we've had couples, we've branched out from our groups that, you know, they've had this group people and they're like, no one's growing. And and the response was, I kind of need to kick it up a gear and I need to actually say that to my group. You know, yep. I need to say, guys, I feel like we're stuck. Yep. And and maybe that's just the reminder that they need. You know, yep. they're a year in. You know, not they're not three years in, but yep. they're a year in. It's like we're just we're stuck, and we got to remind people if hey, this is why we exist. And maybe it's one on one meetings outside, whatever yep. it is. But it can yeah, and sometimes them. even changing up. Hey, yep. are you doing anything yeah. fun? Yeah. 
a different have a potluck mm-hmm. night have a game night <clears throat> change yep. it up because if yeah. we're just doing the same thing over and over again it's pretty yep. easy to get stuck maybe it's even a curriculum change say hey we're gonna do yeah. a right now media video series yep. we're gonna That's do really a good. specific marriage series we're gonna yep. do something something in the middle of what you're already doing just yeah. to change up the the atmosphere right, right. shake yep. it up change it up make it yep. a little bit different make yep. it uh Yep. Enjoyable. Yeah, it, maybe it's outside discipleship. You know, it's yeah. like it's this. I need to do some one-on-one time with some of the guys. Yeah. There's, there's maybe there's a, a someone that needs challenge in a certain way. But those things, you know, we're going. We want to get back to helping everyone in our group grow. Yep. Have yeah. these challenges. And even encourage them to do the breakouts with men's and women's. Yeah. Absolutely. That that yep. shakes up stuff. Yep. In a great way to yeah. get some things moving as That's well. Great. Yep. Yeah. Well, good. We're just about out of time. So I want to say thank you guys. This has been yeah. fun. I, th- I think the conversation worked. I think it was, you know, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I would never say this to your face, but it was a really good conversation and you did a good <laughs> job, but I'm just joking. Thank you. Good job. Way to go. Um, I do want to tell you leaders, the, the episode actually isn't over. A couple, couple more things. One a reminder, as mm-hmm. uh, we talk about often, it would really help us with this resource. If you would rate, review, like, share, make this a resource that people can find. Let people know about it. Other, other group mm-hmm. leaders you know, of, maybe it's your host. Let them know about this resource. That would be a huge help. We also want to hear of some of the questions that you have. If there's things that, that you're like, I want to ask this question, talk to your group's team. If you're watching on YouTube, you can drop that in the comments. We would love to know and hear about some mm-hmm. of the questions that you have. As we look ahead, a few uh, future topics that we'll be di- diving into in this next year. Branching a life group. We talked about that a little bit today. We're going to go into deeper into that. Doctrine and theology. Icebreakers. Mental health. We're going to spend some time on that. And then we're also going to spend some time on, on group guidelines. How to actually use those well. How to mm-hmm. walk through those. Um, So we're just looking forward to where this is going to go. We wanted to end kind of episode 10 with something special, which is bringing together all the different things we've talked about over the last season. We've talked about uh, child care. We've talked about, uh, you know, what a group takes, the the idea of uh, guidelines, purpose, what are things that are challenging in a group. But here's the outcome of, of a group that's led by an intentional leader that's building that relational environment with a biblical foundation. All these elements we've talked about is we see lives change. So we want to share a story of life change from our North Campus, a group that's just uh, transformed this person's life and the impact it's going to have on generations to come. So watch this uh, testimonial and story. I just became a Christian in February of 2021. My whole life completely changed. As soon as I decided to become a Christian, I thought, oh, I should go to church. I was actually a little hesitant about real life because of how big it is. And my sister-in-law said, come with me, we'll go check it out and see how we feel about it. It was just like walking into home. I knew I was in the right place as soon as I got there. Joining a life group, it was definitely the invitation from the church, the invitation of, hey, you should join a life group. You had all the the leaders around the edge, and I was like, well, my Thursday nights are free. So Amber was just standing there, and as soon as I went up to her, I just, I felt at ease, and I was like, okay, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I still had no idea what I was getting into. I just knew I was going to somebody's house on Thursday nights from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and I was gonna do this. One of the best things that I discovered in Life Group is just being around other Christians. I got to see really beautiful Christian marriages and not everybody is like, everything's wonderful all the time. You know, we all have our hardships, but I got to see what God intended for us. I have a 23 year old daughter whom I love dearly. She started asking me, Hey mom, I've noticed things have changed for you. I'm not sure what's going on. Like, this is something all new. What is it all about? I explained to her that I had tried so many other things in my life to fill the emptiness that I felt. And effortlessly, God filled that hole like it was never there. And, uh, I don't think she really believed me, which I completely understand because both of my brothers are Christians. And if they had tried to lead me to Christ in a direct way, I would have come kicking and screaming. It would not have been the way to do it. So I tried to just be really gentle with her and 
show her what God was doing in my life. I went down to see her and asked her if she wanted to come to church with me. She really enjoyed going to church and she started asking me questions and I told her that Jesus was the only thing that had made any difference in my life that was substantial and if I could do one thing for her as a mother, leading her to God would be the one prayer of my heart. She accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior and she got baptized about two months later. Before Life Group, I as a Christian was like a seed planted in the middle of a field. And there is stuff going on all around. And yeah, there's other seeds in the field that are the same variety, but there's other stuff in that field too. And I feel like when I got into a life group, God scooped me up and transplanted me into a greenhouse. I grew faster, I had more nourishment. All of the seeds around me were the same variety. You know, somebody was coming in and pulling the weeds on a weekly basis. I can't explain how much I have grown in this not even a year of being in a life group that I know for a fact because I was a Christian outside of a life group before that and I did not grow that much and I was a new Christian. I was on fire, but living life with other Christians in close proximity, there's something about it that gives you what you need if you're on the fence at all. Just sign up. There's gonna be personality differences and like we're all human beings and we all have our stuff that we bring with us to life and we bring it with us to life group as well. And so those are the places where God gives us the opportunity to grow. It's like being in a greenhouse together and you get to see the things that annoy you and you get to see so much good that God does when you hear prayer requests and you know, a week later, two weeks later, you get to hear how God answered that prayer. It's one of the best things ever. And you don't always get to hear that in church, but you get to hear that in life group. I get to hear that in life group on a weekly basis. We are grateful for the investment you make each week as you reach the world for Jesus one person at a time and make biblical disciples in relational environments. For notes from this show and other great resources to help you grow, visit realliferesources.org.